Today I'm going to make a video using my number one favorite art supply, the art supply I couldn't live without, the arguably best art supply in the world, and that is... the pencil! <laughs> More specifically, my favorite pencil variety, the mechanical pencil. Let's see what we can come up with. Something I've always liked about art and something that always has drawn me to art is the fact that you don't need expensive art supplies to be able to make something cool. It all comes down to how much practice you've put in and the resources that you've collected in your mind and your ability to throw those onto the paper. And that's something you can constantly be practicing without the need to go out and buy some kind of new art supply. And I think the fact that anybody in the world can sort of have access to creating something and making art, even if all you have access to is a pen or a pencil, you can create something. And not to go all Chef Gusteau on you, but anyone can draw and, and that's what fills the world with like all different types of art. And I'm getting a little sentimental, but <laughs> I just love how many different ways there are to approach like the same I general idea. Like you can use all different art supplies or you can try all different art styles or you can try abstract and you can, uh, there's so many different ways to approach the same thing. And the fact that with just one pencil and like a piece of paper, you can create something that didn't exist before. And some of it can have like deeper meaning and tell a story and other art can just be fun and fluffy and some art can be dark and mysterious and make you feel emotional. Like there's no one specific way that art has to be, you know? <laughs> and you can make it with anything. I don't know. I'm feeling like I'm at a loss for words, but I just keep talking. So. <laughs> I don't know, that's how art makes me feel. And art doesn't have to be seen to be enjoyed. Like the creator can just keep it all to themselves and still find fulfillment in that. Or you can share it with the world and see what other people think. I don't know, there's just so many different aspects to it. And it brings me joy. And I hope it brings you joy too. Like I hope you find joy in like the process of creation or sharing or learning from others. It's just, ah, I don't know. Art can start as a way for you trying to find peace in yourself and then when you share it with the world maybe it can help other people find that peace as well and maybe learn that they want to try and explore the world of art. You know, just off the top of my head. <laughs> Someone with the username, I think it was Squishable or something, asked me the other day, do I draw the character first or do I like draw the clothes on the character at the same time? And I, I did answer the question, but to like <laughs> address it more fully, if I know exactly what I want the character to be wearing, I draw it like at the same time I'm laying out the preliminary sketch. So you can see if you look at this drawing that I'm making right now, there's some light lines and then there's some darker lines. So those darker lines are ones that I'm like, yes, that's where I want that to be. So then I darken it up. The lighter lines are those quick, fast ones that are easy to erase if I don't like them and I can move them around a lot easier. And you'll notice she's kind of little naked right now because I had no idea what clothes I was going to give her. So if I don't know what clothes I'm going to give her, the best bet is to just draw the body and get an idea of what the body shape is and then try and figure out what the pose is. That way, once you have that, you can go on and add clothes afterwards and you're going to have a very good idea of where the body is because you've already drawn it. And this helps you figure out where wrinkles are and figure out what parts are further away. And I've seen like hard to draw books where they're like, you always need to draw this way, which I don't think is a harsh rule because sometimes you can just draw, if you know exactly what you want it to look like, you can sort of just, you know, finagle it as you go. <laughs> if you have a hard time with anatomy, I think it's important to focus on the body first and then add the clothes on top. But once you start getting a grasp of that, then you can start taking some little shortcuts. <laughs> And sometimes I think when we focus too hard on creating the skeleton or the body, we can end up with some very stiff characters. And I think a way around that is to focus on the shapes of the body instead of the skeleton of the body. And when I started doing that, I found it just as easy to kind of focus on the clothes if I knew exactly what clothes I wanted the character to wear, because I could focus on the shapes of that. So if you're having trouble with anatomy, Definitely study some references, figure out where all the body parts are. Like we don't have wrists and our elbows or anything. <laughs> you gotta figure out how everything bends and you can also push it. So it doesn't need to be harsh. I mean, like I said earlier, there are no rules in art. So you can, you can make an arm look like a macaroni noodle. That's actually kind of popular right now. Even if it's not physically possible, unless Professor Lockhart tries to heal one of your broken bones. 
But I think every style, even when we take liberties, are rooted in some kind of realism. So it's always important to study life and figure that stuff out. I feel like I am really all over the place right now. I don't remember what a question. Oh, clothes. So yeah, <laughs> focus on the shapes of the character, I think would be my most helpful tip. Because once I started approaching the character as simple shapes instead of like, oh my gosh, I have to draw an entire body. It got a little easier. And I have a whole video on how to like break down the body into shapes. I'll have that linked somewhere if you want, probably in the description if you're having trouble with that. But once you learn to break the body into shapes, it's very easy to then take that knowledge and start breaking clothes into simple shapes and being able to incorporate that into the preliminary sketching process. Another question I get pretty often is how do you come up with the ideas for what you want to draw? And to be honest, <laughs> I don't go about this the way you're probably supposed to. I mean, sometimes I create little thumbnails and then that inspires an idea and then I create an illustration. But for like this one in particular, I just drew a head and then I was like, well, she needs a body. So I attached a body and then I'm like, well, I want her to be kind of floaty. So I make her look floaty, you know, she's not grounded in any way. And she's just, you know, floating there. So then naturally her hands have to kind of be, you know, we don't want them just stiff by her side. We got to like give some contrast. So one can be like way up here and then one can be way back there. And then I don't know, maybe uh, she'll have some clothes. So we got to give her some clothes and then boom. And then I have this kind of drawing right here. Every drawing I make is honestly made for me first. And then I share it with you guys. And there are certain things that I really enjoy drawing. So those are the things that I'll tend to focus on. And lately I've just really enjoyed drawing floaty people. So I think going in, that was the only like, mm -hmm, I'm gonna draw a girl who's floating. That was basically the thought process. And then, yeah, it just naturally evolves over time. And I slowly chisel away at the idea and um, make little changes over time and come up with something that, you know, looks like this. I think this probably derives from the fact that I was a big sketchbooker. <laughs> I just liked creating sketches in my sketchbook and these sketchbooks were places just for me to experiment and create what I wanted to create. I never went to like art class and I never had like art assignments. So I was never in an atmosphere where I had to draw for someone else. And I think what I create definitely shows that. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing that that's the only thing I was exposed to because exposing yourself to like all different ideas and art styles and critiques is what evolves your art. And like all of those things you learn over time are incorporated into your style. And so I definitely would be in a completely different place if I had gone in any other direction. And I don't know, that's kind of like just a deep thought. Like every choice you make leads to more choices that you might not have had if you didn't make that choice. What is today's video? I don't even know. And every once in a while, I kind of feel guilty about it. And then I like try to do what I think other people want to see, or I try to create things that I think are considered more socially acceptable. <laughs> and that never brings me as much joy as just creating, you know? Because art is still art, even if only the artist is getting enjoyment from the creation, you know? That doesn't, just because someone else doesn't like it or someone else doesn't find joy in looking at it, doesn't take the value away from the creator, you know? And personally, I like making art, but I don't really like looking at what I made. So I honestly don't even find joy in the end result as much as I do in the creation of it, which is why I'm so glad that like YouTube exists because I can show the creation of art and not have to just post a finished thing, you know? Oh, here's what I made. And then what do you think? Instead, I can show the start, the middle, the the near the end where it starts getting a little tough and then the end and like you can see the way that rises and falls and like what goes into it and that is what I find enjoyable about art like if you could go to a museum oh man okay like imagine if you went to a museum and then there's like the art but then to the left of it there's like a time lapse of the art being created and you can see the artist's hands getting dirty and creating that thing like Oh, imagine if we had records of that, like, you know, we have some pretty old art. Imagine if we had records of that art being created, I would die. <laughs> Even if it was just like a drawing of it being created, like imagine if there was an artist that was like sitting at the bottom of the Sistine Chapel, like watching Michelangelo work and he's like sketching it out so we can like document it. Now that is my kind of museum. I could get lost in there for sure. 
Now when I'm sketching with pencil, one of my favorite things is like the texture of the pencil and when you like do cross hatching or hatching and you get that texture and you know you're like you look at it and you're like wow somebody drew this that's like my that's my jam so you see in some places i'm not even trying to like hide it that the direction of the hatching just changed because i just I, I love the way that looks i don't know if you've ever like zoomed in on one of your sketches but you can like see all the different layers and like you can kind of see hints of like where you erased and it's just so so pretty i love it <laughs> Now when I draw like big floaty swirly characters, I like to add a big swirl in the background to kind of just, you know, remind me that this character's not just standing there. And so in this one in particular, I decided to actually draw in that shape. <laughs> so I'm just defining that a little bit more, adding in a couple extra where I think it needs it and just, you know, drawing the embodiment of a swirl behind her. And because I like took some of and because some of her clothes I actually drew floaty as well, so like her sweatshirt's kind of billowing and like her little ties from her sweatshirt aren't just laying flat. That helps it look floaty. And then when I add this like swirl in the background, it looks like some the wind is like kicking it up and creating that texture and then that just makes the character look even more floaty. It just contains the art into the paper in a shape. And yeah, that's a lot of fun to do. <laughs> And then nearing the end of the sketching process, I can usually see where it needs a little bit more contrast. So I just darken up some areas, try to lighten up some areas, but if I've already darkened them a lot, erasing usually isn't that much of an option. So I'll just try to darken the areas around it. Unless I get to a point where like, yeah, can't erase anymore. You've reached a limit. <laughs> And then this is what it looked like after a pretty thorough sketching session. If I get really close, you can see all the sketchy bits. I don't like to erase all of them. Like you'll see I've left a few here and there, even if they're like outside of the sketch, but yeah, I love those things. Anyway, I do want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me create some art with only a mechanical pencil and obviously a piece of paper. <laughs> I hope it proved to you that you don't need a ton of art supplies in order to create something and art will always be there for you. You just need to pick up the pencil. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.